This video system will introduce a drainage to... catheter and active vacuum bottles that collect fluid. Since its introduction in 1997, the Plurex system has provided relief to more than 300,000 patients. The efficacy and safety of the Plurex catheter is documented in more than 30 clinical articles published in nationally recognized peer-reviewed journals. The Plurex Plural Catheter System is indicated for the intermittent long-term drainage of symptomatic recurrent pleural effusions, including malignant pleural effusions and other recurrent effusions that do not respond to the medical management of the underlying disease. The system is indicated for the palliation of dyspnea due to pleural effusion and providing pleurodesis, or resolution of the pleural effusion. The Plurex catheter can be used instead of a chest tube to deliver talc slurry or bleomycin as an outpatient procedure. In clinical studies, infection rates are documented at less than 3% and occlusion rates are documented at less than 5%. Compliance and clinical acceptance of the Plurex catheter was extremely high among the patients. The Plurex Plural Catheter is a fenestrated 15.5 French silicone catheter measuring 66 centimeters in length. A 1.8 millimeter barium strip runs the entire length of the catheter and is visible under radiography. The catheter valve is designed to prevent the passage of air or fluid in either direction unless it is accessed with a Plurex drainage line, access kit, or Plurex vacuum bottles. The primary valve keeps the catheter closed when the patient is not draining. The secondary valve provides a backup seal around the access tip when the patient is draining. When the valve and access tip mate, the primary and secondary valves are forced open. When mated, the access tip creates a channel through the entire valve, allowing any debris in the patient's fluid to flow directly into the drainage tube without clogging or getting caught in the valve. The Plurex catheter helps to secure the catheter in place and may promote tissue in growth to help reduce infection risk. 30 fenestrations along with the indwelling portion identify of the catheter the appropriate intercostal space for guide wire placement and position the patient to access the desired guide wire insertion site. The guide wire is typically placed in the 6th or 7th intercostal space. Ultrasound can be used to confirm the guide wire insertion site. Identify the location of the catheter exit site, typically 5 centimeters from the guide wire insertion site. Remember to consider the patient's ease of access in determining the location of the catheter exit site. While some patients have a caregiver to assist with drainage, others perform the drainage procedure on their own. Take patient size, tunnel length, and the catheter length into account when placing the catheter. Surgically prep both sites utilizing the orange tint Chlora Prep applicators provided in the tray. Place the fenestrated drape so that the opening is located over the plant insertion, exit, and tunneling sites. Use the filter straw to aspirate lidocaine solution into a syringe. Attach the 25 gauge needle to the syringe and raise a skin wheel. Aspirate additional lidocaine into the syringe and use the 22 gauge needle to complete infiltration of the access site and tunnel track. Insert the guide wire introducer with needle attached to a syringe through the desired intercostal space and just over the lower rib. Ensure free aspiration of pleural fluid then remove the needle and syringe, leaving the guide wire introducer in place. Insert the guide wire through the introducer, advancing it well into the pleural cavity. Remove the introducer, leaving the guide wire in place. Make a one centimeter incision at the guide wire insertion site. Make a second one to two centimeter incision at the catheter exit site. A smaller incision may provide better security for the catheter. Attach the fenestrated end of the catheter onto the tunneler.
pass the tunneler and catheter subcutaneously from the second incision up to and out through the first incision at the guide wire insertion site. Continue to draw the catheter through the tunnel until the polyester cuff lies inside the tunnel, about one centimeter from the second incision. If the cuff is advanced further into the tunnel, it can make removal of the catheter difficult. Disconnect the tunneler from the catheter. Thread the 16 French peel-away introducer over the guide wire into the pleural cavity. Remove the guide wire and dilator as a unit from the sheath. Leave the sheath in place. Place the thumb over the end of the sheath as the dilator is removed to avoid air entering the pleural cavity. Care must be taken not to bend or kink the sheath as damage to the sheath may prevent passage of the catheter. Insert the fenestrated end of the catheter into the sheath, advancing it until all the fenestrations are within the pleural cavity. This can be verified under fluoroscopy as fenestrations are located along the barium sulfate stripe. The fenestrations must be entirely within the pleural space to avoid leakage into the tunnel tract. After the catheter has been positioned, crack the sheath handle in half and peel away the sheath while ensuring the catheter remains in place. Adjust the catheter so that it lies flat in the tunnel without any kinks. Do not use forceps on the introducer to break the handle and or peel the sheath. Close the incision at the guide wire insertion site. Close the incision site around the catheter. The polyester cuff of the Plurex catheter helps to secure the catheter in place and may promote tissue ingrowth to help reduce infection risk. Exercise care when placing ligatures to avoid cutting or occluding the catheter. With the catheter placed, perform the initial drainage before applying the wound dressing. Individual status. To use one. After draining, clean the catheter valve with an alcohol pad. Attach the valve cap to the catheter valve by holding the catheter valve at the base and placing the cap over the catheter valve and twisting clockwise until it snaps into its locked position. Finally, apply the dressing over the catheter. First, place the foam pad around the catheter. Wind the catheter in loops and place it on top of the foam pad. Place the gauze pads over the catheter. Hold the self-adhesive dressing and remove and discard the center panel from the backing. Peel the printed liner from the dressing, exposing the adhesive surface. Center the dressing over the gauze pads and press it down. Do not stretch the dressing during application. Slowly remove the frame while smoothing down the edges using firm pressure to ensure adhesion detail, including cautions and warnings associated with this procedure, see the instructions for use provided with the Plurex Plural Cap.